Welcome. Today, we would like to discuss on skimmed milk powder particle processing. The purpose of this project, is to study the design on hopper, pneumatic transport and fluidized bed for skimmed milk powder. So, this is how skimmed milk powder looks like. Skimmed milk powder must contain, no less than 95% milk solids and must not exceed 4% moisture, or 1.5% of fat, unless otherwise indicated. It is mainly used as dairy products such as butter, cheese, ice cream, yogurt, and dried milk. But first, how do we get the skimmed milk? We get the skimmed milk, from cows. Fresh milk from cows, are then transported to the processing plant in order to obtain the skimmed milk powder. Now, we're focusing on the attractive world of, particle technology. The process involves skimmed milk powder into hopper for particle storage, pneumatic system to transport the particle into fluidized bed to undergo drying and entrainment process. Hopper is a storage vessel for bulk solid. It is designed to let the skimmed milk powder be transported with a smooth flow. In this stage, the size distribution of the skimmed powder, are varied. To ensure, the particle is moving in a smooth flow, converging walls must be steep enough, called as minimum hopper angle to allow the bulk materials to slide along them which, leave us with the final parameter to determine, the outlet diameter of the hopper. In outlet diameter hopper design, you might need the wall friction angle, and effective angle of internal friction that were experimentally determined. As these parameters are known, the semi-included angle is next to be determined with minus of 3 for safety margin purposes. That's led to determination of hopper flow function. Next, critical applied stress is determined from a plot of intersection between limiting flow function, and powder flow function. All parameters obtained can be used to determine the minimum outlet diameter of hopper given by equation below, where H theta is a factor determined by the slope of the hopper wall. That's how the outlet diameter of the hopper can be calculated. Okay, now, we're moving to the next stage. From hopper, the skimmed milk powder, is transported to the fluid ice bed, through an pneumatic transport system. An pneumatic transport system uses air, to transport material through a pipe or duct. The air, is normally supplied by a fan, or a blower. A sufficient air velocities, must be maintained throughout the system, to prevent settling of skimmed milk powder inside the pipe. When the settling occurs, in the horizontal plane it is called saltation. Whereas when it occurs in the vertical plane, it is called choking. Another element to be considered in the pneumatic transport system, is the pressure drop. Accurate prediction of pressure drop, across the transport system, is essential to ensure smooth transport flow. The pressure drop in the system, is dependent on particle and by thing. Here, are the parameters needed, to design the pneumatic transport system. Firstly, both saltation and choking velocity are determined so that they can be used in the calculation of pressure drop for both horizontal and vertical line. Next, the pressure for bends is determined from the value obtained for pressure drop at the vertical line. Lastly, the summation of all three of pressure drop will gives you the total pressure drop across the pneumatic system. Next, we move to the most important part of this discussion, which is the separation process by using the fluidized bed dryer. It is typically used in industry to produce dry particulate product in the size range of 52,000 microns. Operating characteristics of fluidized bed dryers have their own ability to handle are, first, particulate feed and product in the size range of 20 microns to 5 millimeter, 
second, slurry or solution feeds in fluidized bed granulators. Third, throughput in the range 10 kg per hour to 100 ton per hour solids and the last one, drying times from 1 minute to 2 hours. The crucial parameters that are being used in fluidization are minimum fluidization velocity, UMF and superficial gas velocity, U but, what is the difference between these two velocities? Minimum fluidization velocity can be defined as the superficial fluid velocity at which the upward drag force exerted by the fluid is equal to the apparent weight of the particles in bed. While for the superficial gas velocity, it is defined as velocity of air that comes from the bottom to cause fluidization of the particles. Note that, a good fluidization can be achieved by following this characteristic. That is minimum fluidization velocity less than terminal velocity and followed by superficial gas velocity. From the fluidization process, particles need to be selected according to desired size by entrainment process. Particles will be entrained if a condition is met. That will be the terminal velocity is less than superficial gas velocity.